All right, so for our second day of the class, we're going to further use WordPress. But remember what we talked about last time, that ideally what I would like when this kind of class is going on is that people come in with their own website, their own WordPress site already set up, and then we just get up and running and add e-commerce. But if you're in here to learn basics of WordPress, this is also a good class because we're going to learn how to install WordPress and so forth. We did it last time, but as I, as, I, as I told you, recall that we have Deep Freeze software, that little polar bear looking at us right there, that's Deep Freeze. That means that this computer resets every time you turn it back on, it goes back to factory settings. So everything that we did last time has been erased. So we'll have to do, every time we come in, a little bit of recap, and then we'll get off and running. And by that I mean that on our instruction number one, they're numbered, remember? So on instruction number one, we've already got number step one, two, step, step one completed, which is that we've got WAMP server downloaded and installed. But we have to activate it. We have to run the WAMP server software in order for us to have a website functional. So on your desktop you're going to see the purple W. Double click that, or pink W actually. Double click WAMP server on your desktop. Remember you don't get any feedback. Don't don't click and, click and click and click and click when nothing happens. What you will see happen is on the bottom right corner, you'll see a green W. It might start off red, and then orange, and then green. Does everyone see a little green W on the bottom right corner? Okay, so that means our WAMP server software is active. We've got a virtual server, localhost. We've got this virtual server where we can install WordPress and then get to work. So we'll have to do a couple of these steps the first time, but today, at the end of the day, we're going to learn to back up our site. We're going to learn to, to make a copy of our site to take it with us, because I don't want to start over with my site every time we come. I want to save my site and take it home with me on my flash drive. If you didn't bring a flash drive, again, that's okay. I'll give you a copy of my work when we come to class, but if you'd want to keep working on your project, you want to save it. And you might not be able to email it to yourself. It might be a large file that won't attach on your email. So a USB would be good. My note here on... We did step two. We've got the W in the corner. Step three, confirm web server works. Open your web browser and go to this address. So whatever web browser you like, we've got them all down here. Open a web browser. I'm going to go with Firefox. Just click on Firefox. We're going to get in the habit of then going to the address http colon slash slash localhost. Not localhost.com or .net or anything. It's not a real website. It's not out on the real internet. It's local. It's a, it's a web server virtually on your computer. Press enter, and you should see the WAMP server welcome screen, basically. Does everyone see the WAMP server screen with all these little puzzle pieces? Anyone need any help? So this is just to show us that, yes, WAMP server is running. We can potentially then build as many websites as we want, uh, WordPress websites, for example. Do you see at the bottom, you've got tools, your projects, your aliases. When we've got any websites set up, they will be listed here. Your WordPress project number one, your WordPress project number two, or whatever names we give them, they'll be listed here. And then we've got tools over here, PHP my admin, because Instruction number one is basically download the software, run the software, 
check that the software works, that the WAMP server software works, which we did. We've done with sheet number one. Did anyone try to do any of these things at home on their own home computer? Okay, very good. Um, anyone want to opine on how it went? Easy, not so easy? Pretty easy, okay, hopefully. It's a little different on the Mac, yeah. Yeah, a couple different little bits of different software, slightly different code. Not code, but address. But yes, then you can have a virtual server running so we can do what we're doing in this class. If you haven't done it at home, I recommend that you do. It's free software. It's safe software. And you'll be able to set up a virtual website on your own computer. Any questions on instruction number one? Sheet number one. Okay, I'm going to close that one, and let's look at number two. Instruction number two, sheet number two. We've already got instruction one here done. We've already downloaded WordPress for you. You'll have to do it at home. What we will need to do every time we come in is number two. Sheet number two, instruction number two, create a database. We will need to create the database as a placeholder, and then we will bring back our website that we worked on the previous week. So we won't have to start over completely, but we will need to create a new database when we when we get here. So notice the address http colon slash slash localhost slash php my admin. So on your web browser, either type the address up there or try clicking on the link here. Tools php my admin. <coughs> Sometimes for some reason if you click php my admin and it doesn't take you to this screen and says broken link or something, that just means type the address yourself manually. If the link doesn't work, just remember http colon slash slash localhost slash phpmyadmin. So did everyone get to the phpmyadmin screen? It looks like this, a bunch of boxes and things. Everyone got that? My instructions say, okay, Go to that address. If it asks you for a password, here it is, root, blank password. At the top bar, click on databases. In the create database box, add the name WordPress, click create. Okay, so we'll need to go, every time we come in, next week also, we'll need to launch WAMP server. We'll need to go to phpmyadmin. We'll need to click at the top here, databases. And there will be a box near the top, create a database, choose a name. We can make any number of databases that we want to install any number of WordPress websites that we want. And so the name doesn't matter, but my instructions recommend we'll just create a new database called WordPress. So type WordPress in the box and click Create. Don't forget to, type, uh, don't forget to click Create. Notice I've also typed it lowercase, no spaces, that matters. So we'll keep it simple with no spaces, no capital letters, and no numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just for clarification, um, databases, WordPress is a database and it's the website. The information contained within the website, is that what it is? Yeah, the database is the collection of everything that your website is, okay. basically. So this is the this is the name of the database, WordPress, and it's going to be used by the WordPress software. This can be called Kitty Cat, and it'll still work. It can just uh, we're just using the same consistent name, the WordPress software and the WordPress database. So remember to click create. We get a yellow pop-up that says it should have been created. You will see on the list down here, you've got a new WordPress database, five in total databases. And on the left side, it also says you've got a new WordPress database. Does everyone have the WordPress database? All right, that was my instruction number two. Number three, we need to install WordPress one more time from scratch, starting next week 
we won't. We will continue with what we end up today. And then in part two of the class, we don't have to start again from the beginning. We will continue with what we've created in this class this month. But because we don't, we didn't save our work from last month, we have to re reinstall WordPress one more time. So reading in general, we need to uh, backing up here actually. Um, reading back on number one. Uh, there's a folder on our computer in the C drive called WAMP, and inside of the WAMP folder there's a www folder. We need to move or copy the WordPress software into the www folder, then we can install it. So that means, let's go to your, back to your desktop, minimize all the windows and go to your desktop, You know this trick, if you've got a lot of windows open, you can click the little icon on the bottom right corner of your windows here. There's a little square icon. Just click it and everything minimizes at once. So minimize. And then we'll go to computer again. This time we'll go to local disk C. That's your main hard drive, the hard disk attached to your computer. The network is a different one. This is your computer, the C drive. C as in cat. Double click the C drive. And you're going to see at the bottom, alphabetically, two folders. One folder is called WAMP, and one folder is called WordPress. So the WordPress software is already installed. I know. Can I have to come in? Or... Go ahead and have a seat. The WordPress software is already downloaded, and we need to copy it so that we can put it into our WAMP folder to follow the instructions. So right-click WordPress folder and select Copy. So on that WordPress folder, you want to right-click and copy. Double-click to open the WAMP folder. Double-click WAMP. Inside of WAMP, you'll see www folder. These files that are here automatically, these are the files that showed our WAMP server welcome screen. Those puzzle pieces and everything, that, those are those files. So we'll leave those alone. And because we copied the folder, now we're going to right-click and paste. I might take a moment. It's copying 1,300 files. So copy that over. Make sure you copy the WordPress folder into the www folder. Sometimes what people do is paste it into the WAMP folder, the level above. It has to be inside the www folder. Did everyone copy that over? Okay, let's go back to our, our web browser and let's just go to http colon slash slash localhost. Let's go back to localhost. Look at that, your projects. There's a website, WordPress. How many of you do not see your WordPress folder? So the concept here is that any folder we put into the www folder, here's the www folder, any folder we put in here becomes a new project according to WAMP. So all we would need to do is paste another copy of, uh, of, a, of WordPress software. You don't have to do this, but if we did this, if we pasted another copy of WordPress, WAMP says, oh, you've got another project, WordPress copy. Or whatever you call these folders. Let's say I call the folder Amazing Website. Well, then WAMP server sees you've got a new project called Amazing Website. So this folder name is tied to what WAMP sees as a website. 
That's why my notes here say install WordPress. Go to localhost slash WordPress. If your folder project is named Amazing Website, then your address is localhost slash Amazing Website, isn't it? So we put in a folder into the WW folder called WordPress, and therefore my instructions still make sense. So you can either click on the project WordPress, uh, actually it might not work, so instead click uh, up on the address localhost slash WordPress, just to get into that habit. HTTP, let's go to the address HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress. And you should see this introductory screen where we will install WordPress. If you don't see that, check your spelling. Maybe you misspelled WordPress. Right? If you misspell WordPress, it's going to say not found. There is no folder in the WW folder spelled like that. So my instructions are saying go to that address, I'm going to choose the language to so just continue. I'm going to keep the default language, continue. Here it says these are the, the things that you need in order to install WordPress. We need a database name, check, we just created one, it's called WordPress. We need a database username and password, check, it's in my notes. Uh, we need a host. Check. That's localhost. The address. And the table prefix, don't worry, it'll do it for us. So we have all of the requirements necessary to install WordPress. Let's click Let's Go. Okay, database name. It's not that it already knows that there's a database called WordPress. It just assumes you have a database called WordPress. So if I had a database called Kitty Cat, I would need to change the database name here to Kitty Cat. I uh, don't need to here because we use the name that it already assumes, so that's done. Username, password, my notes. D, 3D, change username to root, lowercase, no quotation marks. So change username to root. Remove the password, leave the box blank. So delete whatever is in password, delete it. Don't put, don't put a space because a space is technically something. When you delete everything, there's nothing there. So make sure there's nothing in the password. And what we're doing here is we're giving WordPress access to the database. What's the database name? What's the password for the database? And the username. This is going to be different on our next screen where it asks us, now that we're installing WordPress, what's your username and password for WordPress? That's going to be different. This always trips up people. There is a name and, and password for the database, which we hardly use, but then there's the name and password to log into WordPress to make edits there. We use that one all the time. And it's in my notes here, so you should never be able to lose it. Table prefix, that's fine. You can have lots of data in your database. This project is going to have that prefix. Don't worry about it. But these are the things you need to do on this screen. Click Submit. If at this point you get a problem, check your spelling. Make sure your password is empty. If uh, there's other problems, I'll help you in one moment. But I think everyone hopefully got the all right Sparky. If you did, click Run the Install. If you didn't, I'll help you in just one moment. We get this welcome screen. Okay, now this information needed, this is what you're going to be using all the time. This is going to be the name of the website, which you can make up if you'd like. I'm going to have a fictional company called Victor's Bakery. I'm going to be selling baked goods online. So I'm going to Victor's Bakery. You can call this whatever you'd like. 
there's going to be a username and password. You can put whatever you want. But if you put whatever you want, you make a note, because I don't know your password, I don't know your username. You made it. But if you follow my instructions, I have a suggestion. 3G. Username admin, lowercase h, password, password, capital P. Admin and password are the worst names and passwords to use. But just for us to get started, we're going to use these. So my username is admin, and my password is password, with a capital P. It's going to be very weak, but again, just to, just to get started, this will be fine. On a real site, when we get to that later, we will use a real password that is much more secure. You want to add an email here, although I believe, however, it's not necessary for us on localhost. If this was a real WordPress site and you forgot your password, you could click Retrieve Password. It would send you an email to retrieve your password. I believe because we're on localhost, we can't do that. It's not a real website. So I don't think it matters if we put anything real here, but you can. You can put your real email here or we'll make it up. And then on Allow Privacy, we'll turn that off. I don't want the search engines to find my site. But again, it doesn't matter because we're not on the real internet. I want to turn that off, though, to remind us to turn it on later when, our, when we actually want to make our site real on the internet. And so those are the steps on sub-step 3. You want to click Install WordPress. It should say success. If there's a problem, I'll help you in just one moment. But it says success, admin, and password. Click login. It asks for the username and password you just made a moment ago, which should be admin and password. This is the one we're going to use over and over. The one um, root and blank, we only need that when we install the software but we use admin and password every time we log in to edit the site. Yes? Uh, as I said, I'll be there one moment. Let's click Login. It should then take you to the dashboard here. And everything we just did, we did last time. This was a recap. The more you do this, the easier it'll be. We will need to do a variation of this again next time and next month, and so forth. So if you manage to log in to the dashboard, great. We'll move on in just a moment. Uh, if you have any problems, raise your hand and I'll help you out. I don't want you to fall back or behind. Just make sure you log into the dashboard and then we'll go on. <coughs>
shooting. All right, everyone, so if you managed to get the software running, this is, again, this, the reason we're doing all of this is because I would love it that everyone comes in and you've already got a WordPress site ready to go. But as, as we saw a show of hands last time, and we'll see again today, how many of you currently have a website already that is WordPress, live on the Internet? Two out of, uh, like, 20. So that's the nature of these kinds of classes. You don't need to come in with a, with a website that's already ready to go because it's not free. You have to pay to have your own little piece of the internet. And so the closest thing is that we have this software, WAMP server on Windows or MAMP on the Mac, so that you can create a virtual server for free to install WordPress. The downside is that it's not live. It's not real. It's not out on the internet. No one can visit it. Uh, only you can on your own computer. The other downside is we have to do this manual installation. We had to move this folder into that folder and run this installation and type a password and all of that. If you set this up on a provider such as GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc., which we'll talk about more later, then this is already done for us. And we've got a website and we're ready to go. So in this room, we'll have to do this every time. We'll do it again together next time where we create the database, we install the software, but we won't have to start with a brand new empty site like this. We're going to end up with, a, with some content today, and then at the end of the day, we're going to save all of that and take it with us. So when we come back next time, we don't have to start all over. Caveat, we do still have to create the database and install WordPress. No, uh, we just have to create the database, but then we re we resurrect our WordPress from this week. We'll get to that at the end of the day. And so, let's see, my instructions here. Uh, if you went ahead, very good. If not, this is what number four is of this section. Last time we spent some time looking at the settings. Uh, I won't again, because we looked at them last week, and remember the videos are online. If you want to recap of what I did last time, send me an email, ask for the, ask for the videos. Now we'll, we'll do this part, which we didn't do previously. This is how I want to do it. I've installed WordPress. I've logged in. It tells me on the top right, howdy, admin. Let's do this. I'm in the web browser Firefox. Close it. Whatever web browser you have, close it. Don't bother logging out. Just close it. If you were already doing something, uh, you'll have to do it again. So just close. Just close it. Because I want to show you this. I showed you these steps. Together we created the WordPress site we logged in. Well, I'm not always going to be around there to tell you exactly what to do. So let's say you go home and last time you installed WAMP and you're, you want to get back to your website. Well, let's open a different web browser. I opened Firefox. I'm going to open Internet Explorer. So open a different browser than the one you were in a moment ago. Just any other web browser. And my notes say here, to get back into your site, to get to the login screen, http colon slash slash localhost slash wordpress slash wp dash admin. That's the link that takes you back to your login screen because if you open up your web browser, it's not going to take you back to your, to your virtual site. It's going to take you back to your home page and such. But you need to memorize http colon slash slash localhost slash wordpress slash wp-admin. Memorize that address or remember that it's on my notes. And so that is the link back to the admin screen, the dashboard of wordpress. Every wordpress site has this wp-admin screen. And so when you type that address and press enter, it doesn't remember that you logged in. And that's fine. That, that'll, uh, that'll give me practice. It does, I'm not logged in anymore. So log in. Admin. 
and password. Capital P for password. And so here it is. If I scroll around, I see my site. Now, uh, I think huh, my Internet Explorer is weird. All my icons on the left are gone. And uh, this is moved down here. So do you have that as well? Are your icons missing on the left? Yours are fine? Huh. Uh, okay, I'm going to switch to another browser. For some reason, my Internet Explorer is not working, so it doesn't matter. If yours works, it works. But let me get back to this again. You should then read, read forward a little bit in my instructions. The point is 4B tells you that's the, lo that's the link to, to get back to your login screen localhost slash the name of your site, which is WordPress, slash WP admin. That's what we'll always use to get back to our site. When you go home and you install this on your own computer, that address should also be the address that you go to to log back into the site. Once again, admin, password. Sorry about that. So here we go. I've got the dashboard. The very first thing that we see when we log into WordPress is this dashboard, this at a glance. You've got this welcome box, this at a glance box, this quick draft box. WordPress is very cool in that it's very customizable. But the problem is that WordPress has a lot of features. And therefore, some features are hidden by default. You can find these hidden features at the very top right corner, Screen Options. Do you see a little tab? Screen Options, click on that tab. This particular screen has the At a Glance turned on and Activity and Quick Draft, WordPress News, and Welcome. If I no longer want to see Welcome, turn it off and notice that goes away. Turn it back on. What I'm saying is that on this particular screen, the dashboard screen, all of the options are on. There are going to be parts in WordPress where there are options that are turned off. Advanced options, for example. So you should be aware that every screen that you visit here will have probably its own screen options. So sometimes when you look up tutorials that tell you, do this in WordPress or do that, and your screen doesn't look the same as the tutorial, possibly your screen options are different. So just be aware that that little tab up on top lets you customize your screen. And so here on this welcome, we've got some things that you could do. Customize your site, change the theme, write your first blog post, etc. This will be nice. We might do those things a little later. We've got at a glance, which is one post and one page. I'll explain the difference. I think we mentioned it last time, but we'll mention it again. And one comment. Oh, we were, were popular. We already got one comment on our site. And some details here. WordPress 4.2.5 activity, recently published, Hello World, and there's the comment. Oh, it's from Mr. WordPress. And then a quick draft to quickly create a post in the news. WordPress 4.4 is out. Well, we've got 4.2 so just some information. This is our dashboard screen when we first log in. We can organize ourselves also. Maybe I want the activity to be first. So notice you can put your mouse on top of any of these boxes. It becomes a four-headed arrow. Click and drag that box up. And now I've got activity first. I want to see this first. Recent comments and posts and such, and then categories. You can organize these boxes how you'd like. One thing is that there's no, there doesn't seem to be a way to revert. If you moved it all around, really customize it, there's no button to take it back to how it was for the first time, apparently. But anyway, you can customize WordPress so that it's most effective for you. When we get to the part about e-commerce, we will add an e-commerce box here that will show us our sales this month, or quarter, or whatever. 
Oh look, it's raining again. Was anyone uh, around campus last week when it hailed? Did you catch the hail? There was hail here. I was teaching a class last Thursday or Tuesday and it hailed. We all took a break and we ran outside to look at the hail. <laughs> Today's only rain. But uh, here then, this is a little customization. Screen options. Uh, my notes here say, okay, we've logged in. Hover your mouse over posts at the left and select add new. We're going to practice adding a post. On the left we've got posts and pages. In general, a page is going to be any screen on your website that doesn't change much. Whereas a post will be part of the blog, which should change. So what are some pages, in your opinion, that don't change too often on a normal website? Maybe welcome, maybe contact, about us that sort of information. That information that doesn't really need to change is best used, is best created as a page. <coughs> if I've got this company, maybe I've got a screen with all of my chefs, or all of my bakers. So that would be a page. Meet the team. That's a page. But then, posts are part of the blog, which, if you take my SEO class, I talk in there that it's pretty important to blog. It's pretty important to attach a blog to your website, and a blog is just articles that you write, posts that you write on a regular basis about the topic of your website. If you take the SEO class, uh, day one was last week, but I couldn't make it, so day one will be this Friday. We'll talk in there about brainstorming, blog ideas, and so forth. But the point is, for search engine optimization, it's highly recommended to have a blog, to, bl to publish blog contest content. So we're going to practice here. We're going to write a blog post for our bakery or whatever site you have. Notice you hover your mouse over, click Add New. If you're new to WordPress, you might be thinking, I'm going to click blog, I'm going to click posts. That'll work. But notice if you hover over these, then the menu pops out. You don't have to click. Anyway, click on Add New. You might get a pop-up that says distraction-free writing, which is a distraction. Go ahead and close that. And then we have this word processor kind of screen. Title and then text of the post. This title here, then, if we practice the tenets of good blog writing, this should be a blog post that explains what the article is about using keywords that help you get found by the search engines. So I've got a, um, a bakery I want to get found. So you might think, okay, a keyword of my site is bakery. People are going to search for bakeries and they're going to find my site, right? No, they're going to find a million other sites because my site maybe is brand new. I don't have enough online cachet and such, so I'm not going to get found. So I'm going to think of keywords that really define my site, my business. I'm a fictional bakery in Eastlake. We're family owned. We specialize in gluten free fare, etc. So those are some keywords. And I'm going to think about how can I use some of these keywords appropriately throughout my site. I'm going to write a blog post. This is our first introductory blog post. We're going to introduce ourselves to the world. And so I'm going to write, Welcome to Victor's Bakery. This will be the title of this blog post. As we get more advanced, this might not be the best title uh, in light of what I had just said about keywords and such, but I have the keyword bakery. Here I'm going to write a little bit of text. I have more space here to think about writing keyword optimized blog posts. So I'm going to write something like, we're happy to finally be online. We are Victor's 
bakery, a family-owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake, California. We specialize in gluten-free goodies. So here I've used some more keywords. Eastlake, family-owned, gluten-free. And the art and the science and the magic of SEO, search engine optimization, is crafting your message on your website, as well as outside of your website, such as social media. So that's a whole class in and of itself, three weeks, four weeks, sometimes five weeks long, that I teach throughout the year, search engine optimization. I'll be sprinkling concepts from that class into this class. But the big idea of SEO is, again, writing content, adding content to your site and your social media that helps you get found. Because nowadays, even though everyone gets it, many of us still get it, but we don't want it anymore. The phone book. Less people get the phone book, less people use the phone book. Nowadays, we're searching on Yahoo, on Google, on Bing, on AOL, whatever. We're searching on our phone. We're asking Siri or Cortana or Google. We're asking it, what's a good Mexican food restaurant nearby? And it'll tell us. Search engines. So that's the art and the science and the magic of getting found. And here's one little taste of that. Writing content with keywords to help you get found. I'm writing this in a blog post because part of good SEO nowadays is to blog. You might have a great website, great content, but it hasn't been updated in a year. Therefore, the search engines say, well, what's so relevant about this website? It's old. Quote, unquote, old. It's one year old. Whereas your competitors have been adding a blog post every month. So the search engines see this bakery hasn't been updated in a year. This bakery updated a month ago, which is better to show to the users. Probably the one that's been updated a month ago as opposed to a year ago. So this is one reason why you want to include blogging on your website. If you take the blogging class, we talk in there about how every business, every website could have a blog. If you think, mine's way too unique. Mine's a restaurant. How could I blog anything there? It's people come and eat my food. I don't know what to blog. In that class on Fridays, we get ideas. I wrote a little bit of text here, and I have a few editing options here, kind of like a word processor, like Microsoft Word or Pages on the Mac. I can make some text bold. Let's say you click and drag to select gluten-free, or whatever you wrote, and click B for bold, and it's bold. You can put bullet points, quotes, a line, center it, that sort of thing, add a link. So this is kind of basic editing tools, very basic, not too many options. So what I would recommend is uh, one of the last, I, I think the last icon on the row here, before that little square, you have two uh, rectangles with, with dots. That one is the toolbar toggle. Click on that icon, it's the last one before the end of the row there. Click on that one and you have a few more options now. Editing the font a little bit, text color, pasting, undo, redo. So not, not a lot of editing options like Word, but just enough because, for example, I can select a word and then change its text color. And it gives me a word count right here, 24 words. Uh, there's no, there's no built-in spell check, unfortunately. Uh, but oftentimes the web browser has a built-in spell check, and if you've got an underlined red line, you can right-click it, and it'll might suggest you, although it's not perfect.
So I'm writing a little bit of text. I want to add a picture. So maybe you've never used WordPress before ever, but can you figure out what do you click here somewhere to add a picture? What's that? Hmm, none of these buttons seems to have a picture. Add media. Add media. There we go. So add media. Let's do this. Type whatever and then press enter to your an empty line down here. And then click add media. And you get this screen where you can upload a picture. It says insert media, upload files. And actually it's saying media in that we can upload pictures, sound, video, PowerPoint presentations, media. We can upload things to our blogs, our blog posts, or pages. Let's say I want to upload the pictures of the bakers on my team on the About page. I can do that too. I can upload multiple pictures as a gallery. Notice on the left we've got Create Gallery. So WordPress has built-in features that allow you to upload a bunch of pictures and it creates a nice gallery. We have Upload Files and we have Media Library. Once we've got files uploaded, they will all be found in the Media Library. We can search and organize by time and dates so we can search media. If we have a link, we have insert from URL. If we have an address from a website, we can copy that address and paste the address here under insert from URL. And then we can have WordPress copy that picture for us onto our site. This then brings up the issues about can I legally do that? Can I take someone's picture and use it on my site? Short answer is no. Long answer is no, because what you want to do is add your own original content, your own pictures, your own text, and such. That will help two things. One, your SEO ranking, and the other, uh, your, your copyright status. If you're adding your own pictures and your own text, your own content, you won't then be uh, possibly in trouble for using someone else's picture. Maybe you found this great picture online and added it to your blog post, but the artist says, you didn't pay me for that picture. And now you have to pay up. Well, if you use your own content, you'll be safe from that. And also, this helps your SEO because the search engines are running 24 hours a day, going all over the internet to find and catalog everything. And so, um, if you're adding your own original content and someone searches for, uh, you know, gluten-free bakeries catering, they might find you because you're uploading your own content. Just to get practice with this, let's click on Insert Media, if you're not already there, on the first one, Insert Media. And on the Upload Files tab, we've got a few pictures that we can borrow for educational purposes on your computer. So Upload Files, click Select Files. You get this, uh, this open window, and on the left side, all the way at the top left, so scroll this panel, this pane, all the way up and find pictures. We've got some pictures built into our computer that we can borrow. So on the left side, just go all the way up and go to pictures. You should see on the side here, sample pictures. Double click on sample pictures. There's a few sample pictures. So choose any picture you like and click open. I'm going to select uh, the koala, maybe. Let's just click on any picture and then click open. I'm about to add this picture to my post. There's a bunch of options that we'll look at here in a little more in detail later. But let's just say we've uploaded a picture or we've selected a picture. Click on the bottom right, insert into post. 
and I've got a picture in my post. So here we're just practicing. We're adding a title, we're writing some text, practice using the formatting bar. This is These are the buttons up here, the formatting bar. And then we'll click Publish at the right. There's still many more things to learn here, which we will learn, of course. But we've written this if this was a real website, victorsbakery.com. No one would see this until I click Publish. Notice I can also click Draft, Save Draft. We would save it to my WordPress site but it would not be visible by the, by the public yet. And again, this is not a real website, so even when we click Publish, no one will be able to see it. But I want to click Publish on the right side. At the top, it says I've, you've, your post has been published. When we spoke about WordPress last time, I talked about there's the front end and the back end. What are we looking at right here? The back end, the, back end, the dashboard, the control panel. Only you can see this because you've got the login. I want to look at the front end. I want to look at my site as if someone is visiting my site on the internet. How do I visit the front end? Anyone remember that? If you, go to the, if you move your mouse on the top left corner, you will see the name of your site, Victor's Bakery. You hover your, your mouse over the name of your site, Visit Site. That's the front end. At the top left corner, hover over the name of your site, click Visit Site. There we go. So if this was a real site and someone came to my site, this is what they would see. This design here, this clean design, maybe a little too basic, but a clean design. There's my Welcome to Victor's Bakery post, text, and the picture. I scroll down. This was published today, November 9th. Leave a comment. And then before that, Hello World, Welcome to WordPress. So there was a, there was a little sort of like template post already made for us. We'll see where that was saved at. And then on the left side, we've got this sidebar with a search button built in, recent posts, archives, other stuff. And so we've spent time setting up a database, installing WordPress, creating a WordPress post. Perfect time for a break. When we come back we'll look at more aspects of WordPress and uh, we'll keep learning. So it's 151. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 201. If you need any help up to this point, call me over and we'll catch you up. Hi.